This time we look at number five in our series on God's love and justice. This one's entitled The Wrath of Divine Love. And I'm very disturbed by that title. Wrath, of course, is the old English word for anger. So let's call it that. The anger of God's love. Does that make any kind of sense when you look at the material that is there in Scripture? Yes, it does talk about God becoming angry in that sense. He is upset with what is happening in this world when Israel defies him. Um, it mentions that Jonah got angry. It talks about other people getting angry and we can understand human anger. But as it says there in James 1.20, as I've translated in the Free Bible Version, human anger does not reflect the good character of God. If we want to talk about anger, our problem then is that our anger is transferred to the way in which God gets angry. I don't think that's a, a proper equivalency, could you say? I put in the notes for this time some quotes, which I think really we need to consider. Um, the second one by Kirby Godsey. I believe that we can understand the cross only if we are willing to see that God, Jesus did not die to appease an angry God. Jesus did not die to satisfy some abstract penalty for sin. It wasn't a question of God being angry. And in that case, Jesus had to persuade the Father otherwise. In fact, look at that extended comment from the noted Bible commentarian, William Barclay. He talks about that and says that even as he was growing up, he couldn't understand this whole idea of Jesus placating, appeasing, if you want, the anger of his father. He said to himself, that can't be. And it actually drove him out of Christianity until he realized that that wasn't true to the Bible message, particularly there in the New Testament. Uh, there's some quotes there from both Luther and Calvin, which say opposite. They really did believe that by his sacrifice, Jesus averted the wrath, the anger of God. And he was about to smite us. And he took the, the, uh, the hit himself. And uh, uh, Julian of Norwich, 14th century uh, believer, I saw no wrath except on man's side. And he forgives that in us, for wrath is nothing else but a perversity and an opposition to peace and to love. You know, in other words, that's nothing to do with the way in which the Father operates. George Fifield, Christ's death was not the result of an outpouring of the Father's wrath. It was the result of the world's violation of the Father's law of love. Yes, so well said. So, Please look through this and understand what we're saying. As I put in the notes, the Old Testament term in Hebrew for God becoming angry is that his nose grew hot. That's how you said somebody became angry. Are you really telling me that you want to translate the Hebrew where it says that as God's nose grew hot? It, it clearly is a very human description right there. And we're applying that to God. And I think that is where we have to draw the line and say, no, God does not have anger in the same way that we do. When we get angry, uh, our reason goes out the window. We act spontaneously without thought. No, that's not what God does. Yes, he is very opposed to sin. Let me make that clear. Yes, he is hostile to all that is evil. Let's say it that way. But to say he's angry in the same way that we're angry, I don't think so. In Malachi 3.13, it says, you have said terrible things about me. And I believe that sometimes we do say terrible things about God too. And I really do think we need to go back and think about titles like the wrath of divine love. Uh, as I say, look at that comment by William Barclay. See if that doesn't ring true to you. Uh, look at 
the Ellen White quotes. The Saviour's sacrifice was not to create in God a love that had not before existed, but it was the expression of a love that had not been appreciated or understood. For God so loved the world that he gave. The, the love of God came first. It wasn't Jesus being the loving one trying to persuade the hostile one to forgive us and to be nice to us. No, not at all. So we need to rethink much of what we say in this regard. Let's not talk about God being angry with us or hostile to us. He wants to welcome us back. And the way he does that is through love.